Humans and humanoid robots are getting closer than ever through relationships. Must watch. As humans and robots become closer, we begin to create a variety of connections with them. Are you platonic with your phone? Or are you turning into a machine? Or do you believe that you are going to be one? Robots have the potential to alter everything we think we know about humans. Smartphones are now owned by about 84% of the world's population, and they are quickly becoming a need. So in today's video, we'll discuss on humans and humanoid robots are getting closer than ever through relationships. Interested in learning more? So keep an eye on the footage. Hello everyone! Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click the notification bell button to stay up to speed on world politics, finance, international market, space, and anything else in the world of technology. Elon Musk told Kara Swisher, We are already a cyborg in the form of your emails, social media, and whatever you do. You have a digital version of yourself, a partial representation of yourself online. Musk's assertion is in line with what roboticists have discovered in human-robot interactions research. Robots are everywhere. A person can use a coffee maker, an electric toothbrush, and an iPhone before leaving the house in just one morning. People regard robots differently depending on their role, appearance, and previous experience with them. Dr. Julie Carpenter discovered that soldiers often identify the robot as my hands, or otherwise as a physical extension of themselves, in a study of military personnel with advanced robots. Bots become more than just tools to the soldiers with whom they serve. They are given unique identities, and those that are killed in war are buried with 21-gun salutes and eulogies. Anthropomorphization is the process of putting human characteristics onto an item, and it can be seen in robots and humans who have experienced less trauma together than military robots and human troops. Roboticist Kate Darling said in an edition of the Lex Friedman podcast that individuals build significant relationships with the popular Roomba robot vacuum. People will converse with your Roomba, sympathize with it when it gets stuck in corners, and even remark that it has a personality. Instead, children were discovered to be so rude to Alexa that Amazon had to add a magic word option to try to prevent bad comments. We treat them like they're alive, even though we know they're machines. Darling stated at the 2017 Aspen Ideas Festival when discussing useful robots. In the Roomba and Alexa, we can identify both favorable and bad handling of robots that don't aim to resemble humans. Amica, one of the most lifelike robots ever created, can realistically smile, blink, and move his shoulders. The robot is the world's most advanced human-shaped robot, reflecting the bleeding edge of human robotics technology, according to Amica's parents, Engineered Arts. Engineered Arts developed Amica to be a vessel for testing and developing other AI programs. Thus, while the bot has some AI capabilities, it was supposed to be a blank slate for testing and developing other AI programs. Programs for a humanoid robot are just being developed by AI developers. Humanoid robots will be able to execute various human jobs and fill different responsibilities in the workplace, according to Forbes' Sanjit Singh. Sex or sex job is one of the tasks that humanoid robots regularly perform in the media. AI robots, according to David Levy, a doctor of social robots, will be fully integrated into humans' social and sexual lives. I believe the first sophisticated sex robots will be available by around 2050. But it will be another 50 years before people accept that it is normal for a friend to say, I am in love with a robot and I am thinking of marrying him, stated. Although others claim that sex robots will further reinforce a bad worldview for some men, they could be an obstacle to the sex work business. According to a sex worker, increasingly lifelike sex robots risk hardening those men's attitudes toward human women. Women are already considered subhuman, and now we'll have actual subhumans trained to imitate us as closely as possible. The two viewpoints, robot spouses and robot sex workers undermining real women unwittingly, are not mutually exclusive. We're speeding toward a world where both realities are plausible, a situation akin to the charming Roomba and the verbally abused Alexa. While sex robots have garnered a lot of attention in the media, robots based like humans may not be bound to a thorny existence somewhere between lover and sex doll. Tesla, Elon Musk's electric car firm, is developing Optimus. The Tesla bot, when it's ready, it'll walk on two legs and have a head on its torso, but it'll have a screen for a face, and it won't be human-like. Optimus, according to Musk, will be built to undertake the boring, repetitive labor that humans despise. 
Although Optimus didn't delve into specific vocations, Musk's declared goal is to automate jobs that humans would cheerfully resign, rather than industries where workers are hesitant to spend their time to a machine. These ethical issues surrounding human-robot interactions will emerge sooner than we think. Whether you like robots or not, some experts say humans will marry them as early as 2045, which is just 20 years away. The robots can chat, move, and lift at the moment. But it won't be long until they can think, reason, and feel. The protagonist in the 2012 film, Robot and Frank, a former cat thief named Frank, is suffering from the early stages of dementia. Concerned and guilty, his son gives him a home robot that can chat, cook, and clean, and remind Frank to take his medicine. It's a robot that we're getting closer to constructing in the real world. Frank, who is initially repulsed by the prospect of living with a robot, gradually comes to regard the robot as both functionally necessary and socially companionable in the film. When Frank and the robot get into peril, the film closes with an obvious link between man and machine, with Frank protecting the robot. Of course, this is a fictional scenario, but it encourages us to think about other types of human-robot relationships. My current research on human-robot relationships delves deeper into the subject, going beyond sex robots and robot love romances to the most fundamental and significant of all partnerships – friendship. My colleague and I recognized some potential dangers, such as abandoning human pals in favor of artificial companions. However, we discovered various circumstances in which robotic companionship can be used to improve people's lives and lead to friendships that are comparable to human-to-human -human interactions. John Danaher, a robotics philosopher, sets a high standard for what friendship entails. His starting point is the Greek philosopher Aristotle's definition of genuine friendship, which defined an ideal friendship as based on reciprocal goodwill, admiration, and shared principles. Friendship, in the sense, is a relationship of equals. Building a robot that meets Aristotle's criterion is a significant technical problem that is still a long way off, as Danaher concedes. Robots that appear to be getting close, like Hanson Robotics' Sophia, rely on a library of pre-programmed responses. They're more like a humanoid chatbot than a conversational equal. Anyone who has had a test conversation with Alexa or Siri knows AI still has a long way to go in this area. Aristotle also discussed various types of imperfect friendships, such as utilitarian and pleasure friendships, which are inferior to true friendship since they do not require symmetrical bonding and often benefit one partner unequally. This type of friendship establishes a low standard that some robots, such as sex bots and artificial pets, obviously meet. Relationships with robots are a natural extension of relationships with other objects in our world, such as people, pets, and possessions for some. Psychologists have even studied how people react to media artifacts, such as computers and televisions, in a natural and social way. Humanoid robots, you'd think, are more friendly than your personal computer. However, there is no consensus in the subject of robot ethics on whether we can or should build any kind of friendship with machines. Human-robot companionship is an oxymoron, according to an influential group of UK experts who mapped a set of ethical principles of robotics and marketing robots as having social capacities is dishonest and should be handled with care, if not concern. Investing emotional energy in entities that can only simulate feelings, according to these researchers, will always be less gratifying than creating human-to-human -human bonds. Will humans mistreat or admire robots if they appear to be more human-like? Will there be any disadvantages of this? Having said that, as we near the finish of this video, we'd like to thank you all for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Most importantly, if you want to be kept up to date on anything relating to space and the internet, you should subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, peace.